you have some time before you're getting to the place where you're applying for law school, try to get some experience with the law firm. Join the mock trial team or, you know, shadow somebody. It's good to have that context going in. Welcome to Learning From Experience, a podcast for college students and recent grads who want to hear directly from alumni on how they've adjusted their lives post-graduation, including personal stories of success, career readiness, and tips for navigating the real world. Created by the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences at Arizona State University. I'm your host, Megan Finnerty, and today I'm talking with Courtney Barger, who graduated from ASU in 2020. She was a double major inside the college. She studied economics and justice studies from the School of Social Transformation and has since gone on to complete law school and recently took her bar exam. How are you feeling just hitting those two big milestones? Hi, Megan. Thanks. I'm happy to be here. I feel much better now that they are over. (laughs) Well, I'd love to rewind and go back into your experience when you were younger. When did you start realizing that you wanted to be a lawyer and how did you start preparing to one day be at law school? I figured out quite young that I was interested in being a lawyer. I think I was about 16. I kind of bounced around between different ideas about what I wanted to do with my life and stumbled upon the idea of being a lawyer. And then it wasn't really so much a matter of deciding. It was trying it out and seeing if I proved my theory, which I did pretty much through the end of high school and then all the way through college. And I never proved myself wrong. So I I think it was the right choice. I, you know, did a a small shadowing experience in high school at the local court. I'm from Arizona originally, so uh, in the Tucson area. And then throughout college, I worked at, I think, three different law firms in one capacity or another. I was also a RA, CA, and I did mock trial. So all of those things put together, I, I felt like it was a pretty strong consensus that law was the right path for me. What do you think prepared you the best for what being an actual lawyer would be like? Interacting with lawyers is probably the single most important thing that uh, I did in preparation for making that decision. I, After going through law school and interacting with a lot of other people going through law school, I think there is a subdivision of people that go to law school who are very smart and very capable and don't quite know what they want to do after college. And so law school is something that they are able to do. And so they make that choice. And I think a lot of people end up not happy with that decision. So what was important to me, because I had heard that from people back in college, was that I exposed myself to the legal field in a number of ways, spending time with lawyers, exposing myself to different types of practice. So I worked for a bankruptcy attorney. I worked for a couple of criminal defense attorneys um, and seeing if The working environment was something that appealed to me. The day-to-day of being a lawyer is a lot of reading and research and writing. I love trial as much as the next gal, um, but that's for most types of law, not most of what you're doing. And even for criminal defense law, which is probably the most heavy trial work, it's still only a small part of what you do. When you were here in college, Was there any part of either your justice studies major or economics major that you feel like those skills translated well into law school? Absolutely. Yeah. I think there is just the, you know, day to day of being a student that you kind of keep with you forever when you're a lawyer, um, which is just a lot of reading critically. And I think justice studies was great for that. Economics, I think, built a lot of context for me about the kind of systems that you interact with as a lawyer. Both of my majors combined changed my trajectory a little bit because I think when I first wanted to be a lawyer, what appealed to me was, you know, trial practice and criminal law. And those, I I have immense respect for criminal defense attorneys, criminal prosecutors. It's a lot of hard work. It's also very heavy. And I think that there's a lot of, you know, difficult concepts of justice and access to justice that they get wrapped up in criminal work. And, you know, honestly, it was something that I didn't think that I wanted to spend every day of my life interacting with, you know, it's really, really heavy. Um, So studying economics gave me some other alternatives for the type of work that I I thought I might want to be doing. At what time throughout your undergraduate career, did you have to start the application process and start getting ready to applying to, I'm assuming, multiple law schools. So I took 
my LSAT a little later than I initially planned to. I think I took it September or October of my senior year. And then I got my scores back. Uh, I don't know, maybe it was two months later. You can apply before you have all of your materials in in some ways, um, but you might want to take your LSAT sooner because what you score is going to determine, well, maybe you want to retake it, or maybe you want to target different schools depending on your range. I started applying probably in December, which is pretty late in the game, and effectively was applying January and February um, and made my decision in April, end of April. I definitely recommend applying to multiple schools. A big factor in law school that I don't recall being anything in undergrad is um, scholarship negotiations. If you are not exclusively applying to schools that are a reach for you with with your stats, you absolutely should think about uh, how expensive law school is, right? If especially if you're not going into the private practice and going to be making a whole lot right off the bat, you know you want to set yourself up to be secure. So if you apply to a number of schools that you're likely to get into, uh, you might be able to get scholarship packages from one school or two, and then contact the school that you really want to go to and say, I'd really love to go here. And here's what other schools have offered me. And so I, I'm wondering if you would match this and then, you know, maybe save yourself some money down the road. Very interesting. I didn't even know that you could kind of negotiate with scholarships. So that's a great tip for students if they're applying to know. Would you mind just detailing a little bit more what goes into the application process? So you have to take the LSAT. Are there other things that you need like reference letters or personal statements? Absolutely. Um, So it's been a while. So let me see if I can remember. Definitely a personal statement. I had several letters of recommendation. Some schools allow you to write, you know, more than just your normal personal statement, a personal statement about why that school specifically. On all the forums, you'll you'll see them called YX essays, but it's basically like, why Georgetown? Why ASU? Right? And, and you're supposed to explain why that school is a good fit for you. Some schools have additional essays that are opportunities to tell them a little bit more about yourself. Um, some schools have diversity essays where you can explain how you would bring an interesting perspective to the class. Then I believe they do want a resume as well. And then um, I think most schools still want your LSAT score, although I know that's changing a little bit these days. I remember very clearly from my application process, I had all my materials together with the exception of my personal statement. And I agonized over my personal statement for probably a month And it just delayed me and it was miserable. And I spent so much time thinking about it. And I will say this, it is important. And it is a statement about, you know, a part of who you are or who you are or why you want to do this. But it's also just a small part of your application. And it's certainly not as important as your GPA and your LSAT score in terms of what the school is going to look at. So spend time thinking about it but don't let it be the thing that holds you back. And I think that is often very difficult for um, people who want to be law students. Um, You want to be perfect and have everything all in line and and make this statement an encapsulation of who you are. And it's never going to be perfect. So get it to a point where you're happy with it and, and go. Was there anybody at the university level or around your personal circle that you said, okay, can you read my personal statement? Or is it something more that a lot of people do on their own? I think it's a mixed bag. I definitely relied on mostly my friends um, because I chose to write my personal statement, not about, you know, my professional experiences, but more about, you know, my my values and and what makes me who I am. And so I thought that the people who would best see that and, and be able to tell me if it was accurate and if, if it was really capturing what I wanted it to capture were the people who know me best. I do have a, a mentor who was my mock trial coach. Anybody who's in ASU mock trial or around it knows Chris Doran and he's a great guy. And I, I'm pretty sure I had him read it at one point. I don't believe I ever had Professor Broberg read it, but he was also a wonderful mentor of mine. Well, it sounds like you've done everything so far that you've sought out to do. You prepared for law school, you applied, you got in. Once you were in law school, was there anything that really surprised you about either the workload or just what it actually was when you were finally there? 
I don't know that there was anything I was really shocked by. I felt like the particular experiences and choices that I had made before going prepared me very well in a way that I, I don't think I even knew they were preparing me when I was doing them. For example, um, civil procedure is a class that you will take during first year of law school. And it is notoriously a very difficult class because it's all about the, the whole structure of how a civil law case goes to trial. And there's all these rules and how they fit together. And yeah, I have heard from so many people that it, that it was their most difficult class and they didn't understand it till the very end. And I felt like working in law firms, um, doing mock trial where we had, you know, all of these pleadings and that mirror very closely what you see in the, the rules of civil procedure um, and interacting with lawyers and like watching cases move through the court system. I had context for what it looked like in practice. And so, you know, when I learned about a particular rule of discovery, it wasn't this ambiguous sort of abstract concept, right? I had a way to place it into context, which is why I think you are advantaged going into law school if you have some amount of working experience at a law firm. I know a lot of people in law school who never worked at a law firm, and they did fine. Like it's not a, it's not going to exclude you from doing well. But I think it gives you a, a pretty good insight into the world you're walking into. Okay, Courtney. So you just finished law school. You graduated. Huge deal you're a lawyer, you're already looking at multiple firms to work at, what would be your advice for students who want to be in your position one day? I think number one, don't let perfect be the enemy of good in your application process, in, you know, actually being in law school and being ready for class, being ready for exams, you know, you want to do well and you want to be prepared, but also perfection is an illusion. You know, let yourself Enjoy the experience, let yourself learn and let yourself be imperfect, but keep moving forward. And then I think if you have some time before you're getting to the place where you're applying for law school, try to get some experience with the law firm. Try to join the mock trial team or, you know, shadow somebody for a little while if you don't have the opportunity to do a full internship. But anything you can do to kind of get a picture in the world of law, um, it's good to have that context going in. If you're listening and you would like to talk more with Courtney about her experience, you can connect with her on LinkedIn, reach out to her there, or I have an email for you. It's going to be ceb316 at georgetown.edu. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. To hear more alumni advice, head to our episode page wherever you listen to podcasts, check out the college's YouTube channel, or visit the college.asu.edu slash LFE podcast. See you next time.